Thanks uh, for staying with us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now turning to security matters and we've invited uh, policy analyst Yemi Daniels. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay. So we're talking about President Buhari's latest stance on terrorism and banditry. Yesterday, his uh, chief of staff, uh, Ibrahim Gambari, uh, passed a message from the president that said he would deal decisively with bandits, he would use military action, and would not even consider amnesty or negotiations. This is the president's stance on this matter. But let's, uh, let's begin with the negotiations. If the presidents, if the presidency opts for a, you know, dialogue, opts for negotiation, what are the likely, likely outcomes are we going to see from that? Well, uh, well, once again, thank you very much for having me. I would like to say that I want a negotiation, basically on the part of Nigeria, Nigeria does want the, the abductees back, essentially, and uh, Nigeria would have to look around what, what are the best terms that the, the abductors would want to hear. And uh, from, the, from, from an historical perspective, it has always been ransom. From ransom, well, may government had denied a, a couple of times that ransom was not paid. Uh, but over, over, over time, we always knew that this thing, there are some underhand dealings underneath uh, to ensure that these uh, this, uh, negotiations go through. Uh, it's either we're willing to have them uh, uh, and they, they release the, the, the abductees on certain terms that the negotiators, the, the, the bandits would want for adventure. Like they did say that there were cases where some, some of them were arrested and some of them were killed. They might be willing to say, uh, let's have some of our people back. But let me quickly say this again. I've always said this, and I'll say it again. We should not, I do not think these are the bandits. I want to believe that this is also terrorist. Uh, we shouldn't make the same mistakes we made at the beginning of Boko Haram terrorist attacks, that we, 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 they were mistaken for mere insurgents. They were mistaken for people who are dis disgruntled elements and I think that if we do not have, if we do not name the problem what it is, we might not be able to, to provide effective solutions, sustainable solutions to them. So I would like to say that these are essentially terrorists. Forget whatever, uh, forget. I just, I just don't want to see, I think that the abandoned, the abandoned, these are terrorists and that we need to, we need to see this situation exactly the way it is. So the options are not so many. We, they, we don't know what they would ask for. And most of the time we would ask for some of their commanders to be, to be returned to them, some of their folks to be, will be released to them. And sometimes they probably would ask for money. And then Nigeria would say, okay, we want the abductees back, as many abductees as you have with you. But they would say, well, we, the, the ones you want, the ones we have, the ones we just took at, the ones we can give to you back now, we may not be able to give the old ones we've always had with us. So there are so many, there are very limited options, but what Nigeria does want is we want our citizens back to safety. All right. We'll say good morning to Barista Okereke Chumike, the founder, African uh, Law Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, too. Good morning. Thank you, thank you. Sorry right. for coming in a bit late. No, it's, it's, I it's was fine. With the All right, so, so I, I want you, you to come in here. The president going, you know, um, taking this uh, route, saying there's not going to be any negotiation, there's not going to be any amnesty for bandits um, and the likes, um, goes completely against what uh, Sheikh Gumi and uh, some other um, persons had suggested and had, had advised. Uh, we were almost getting to a place where we needed to even show pity and um, uh, have a conscience, you know, towards these bandits because, you know, they, you know, they, they also are nice people. That's almost the way it was getting to be painted. Um, but I want your thoughts on, you know, why the president has taken this stance and if um, it is uh, the wiser decision to take. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think I'm 100% in support of the, the stance of the president. A bandit is a criminal. And uh, if you're a criminal, you're a criminal. You don't uh, parley with criminals. The ones are the antecedents of the bandits. 
you know, we over the time we have been, uh, you know, uh, somehow uh, take them as uh, men, um, men, uh, miscreants. The, the bandit is almost equivalent to terrorists. This is a man that will rape the homeless, the the the, the, the northern region, you know, kidnapping, destroying properties, killing people, taking ransom. These are criminals, and you don't dialogue with criminals because if you do that, you keep encouraging many others to come up. If you dialogue with them, if you negotiate with them, you now find out that criminality has become a business. People will start going into it because they know that government will come back to negotiate. How, how do we do that? It means that the rule of law has no relevancy. It means that the our our constitution has no has no relevancy. When you this, when you breach the law, when you go contrary to the, the the law, the law should take hold of you. You need to be you need to be subjected to. The tenets of the law. If you commit a crime in every sense of demo democratic government, you will should be apprehended and be persecuted. The bandits are criminals and they should be apprehended and persecuted. That is what the law of law is all about. And that is what that's what makes us a society and a democratic society. I I if you can remember the genesis of the Boko Haram, they started this way. And the government start to, you know, you know, you know, begin to uh, parley with them, begin to take them like they are nothing. Barry and Sachiwiki. these guys have metamorphosed into another big-headed monster. Barry this Sachiwiki. is another monster coming to... up. Know. We Sachiwiki. need to give you the necessary um, attention needed. Okay, I wanted to bring your attention to something, you know, your colleague just raised, uh, Mr. Yemi Daniels, who's a policy analyst. He, he mentioned uh, just before you came on that the presidency keeps on denying ever negotiating, denies ever paying ransom for, you know, the release of any kidnapped person. But reports always come out that money was paid. If the presidency is saying at this time that for the Kagara boys, what would happen would be decisive military action. How can we then trust them, you know, knowing reports, information, that in the past where they denied ever paying ransom, ransom was likely paid? Yeah, I think uh, the, 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 it's, uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, it has come to this level, that the government cannot ever be trusted. You know, it is, it is one of the challenges we have in this country. We are lacking uh, what they call security sector governance. It's very poor. We don't have a viable security sector governance where there is tra transparency, where there is accountability, where there is integrity, where there is the rule of law. So where there is the proper management of resources. Over the years, we have seen what has happened. So, and uh, that has brought uh, public uh, distrust to, on uh, the, the apparatus of, of of security apparatus we have, and even towards the government. That's actually why when the government said they do this, people put it to take, the, take it with a pinch of salt. It's very unfortunate because obviously we, we, we do many in some occasions there have been allegations of pain of, uh, of a lot. And uh, it's very unfortunate if, if that is the solve, that if that is the case, he don't actually pay us. You know, you can, can we remember when the you know, US Army stormed the Nigeria? Uh, <coughs> From Nigeria to school one of their kidnapped um, um, citizens. That's what I remember. That is right. what it should be. We need to we need to we need to build up our security and um, apparatus to the level of capacity. we have the capacity to deal with security challenges. Right. But um, most security kindly hold on, sir. has brought us to a situation whereby we keep the retaliation and they begin to mess up the whole situation. All it's right. unfortunate that the government is taking Mr. this Mr. Mr. But as you... Oh, Barry Sachinwike, I beg your pardon. Um, kindly hold on. Um, we also have uh, Yemi Daniel as a policy analyst uh, with us. Um, uh, I want your thoughts, uh, Yemi, uh, Mr. Daniel, on the, for those who have suggested uh, amnesty for bandits, those who have, you know, you know, pushed that narrative, Sheikh Gumi inclusive. Where do you think their 
frame of thought and their you know their suggestions are coming from you know why why do you think that we have you know those type of ideas at a time like this when so many people including the president uh, doesn't feel like that there should ever be a conversation about amnesty uh, well uh, what Shigumi had said uh i honestly do not want i do not know where to place Sheikh in the circumstance to be honest with you but from from a from a nigerian perspective i think that uh, there seems to be a perception that uh, we do not have the capacity nigerian security system does not have the capacity to rein this terrorist in i keep saying it i do not consider them as bandits i consider them as terrorists and uh, there doesn't seem to be enough capacity to ring in this terrorist. Remember, uh, recall that the former chief of army staff did say that there are ungoverned spaces. And that tells us that we are in a serious situation where a former chief of army staff would say that there are so many ungoverned, he didn't say ungoverned, he said so many ungoverned spaces that gives us a clue that we are in a deep situation. And that's what I, I think it's on the, on the back on, on, the, on the backdrop of such perception that Sheikh Gumi is advocating for or is suggesting amnesty. Uh, having said that, I also believe that it's a welcome development that the president had said uh, there was the government was not considering amnesty for them. Uh, because usually when you, you reinforce bad behaviors when this is done, unfortunately we have gotten to a situation where we may be negotiating from a weak position because it, uh, to a large extent it could, the security system is not effective, uh, it's not an effective combat measure against uh, terrorism. How, however, however, we need to, Nigeria needs to talk tough and uh, we need to do a whole lot of work more, uh, short term work, uh, medium term work and long term efforts so that but at least these terrorists will come to realize that, well, even if Nigeria may not be winning as much as we should at this time, in the near future, we will be rounded up. And that, right. that note of warning has to be sounded very loud and clear to them. And that's why I feel it's a welcome development. It's a tough call, I must tell you. I do not envy the president at this point in time. Uh, because we are so, between the devil and the deep blue sea. So, so what you're People saying... say that we are not negotiating with bandits. Mr. Uh, Daniels. Terrorists, it simply means we're endangering the lives of our citizens that are with them. Yeah, me Daniel, then, yeah, me Daniel hold on. So, yeah. so what, just to clarify what you're saying, um, you, from what you've said, the uh, suggestions about amnesty and negotiations and, and the likes are coming very likely because um, persons like Sheikh Gumi may have seen that our security architecture may not be capable of dealing um, with these uh, bandits. Um, is, is that what you're saying? Um, or, or, would you, or would you would you think would you also say that maybe you know some of these persons um, have chosen to ignore the gravity of the crimes that these bandits have committed? Well, yes, I do understand that they may have ignored. The the, the 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 gravity, but they also would want to look at. They, they stay there. Trust me, across the entire northeast and northwest, these people are reigning supreme. I tell you the truth. Reports coming down south there tells us that these people are in and are, are so much in control of this of this of the systems there to the extent that even the the former uh, chief of staff did say, chief of army staff did say. There were many ungoverned spaces. That simply tells us that there are places that the government security apparatus does not reach at all. all there right. is no rule of law there in those places. There is no government presence in those places. So those places are small. They are just uh, easy, easy, easy. I would like say encroachment for terrorism of the sort. Okay. So I mean, so I think they do, it's not as if they have ignored. They may they have ignored rather. They have it, but they are also looking at the situation that it could get worse. Okay. You understand All that right. if something is not done, this thing could get worse because there is no capacity on the side of the Nigerian army or the Nigerian security system to rein the situation in. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Yemi Daniels. Let's bring in Barista Chiwike here. Uh, Barista Chiwike, um, can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so there have been, there's been conspiracy theories that because the president is from one part of the country, and it seems the majority of these criminals are from that same part of the country. It seems that the president or the president, he has been, you know, dealing very light with this situation. How do you think his stance on this now, saying he's going to deal decisively with them, he's going to, you know, use military action? How do you think this would maybe put to rest all these reports and, you know, uh, rumors, so to speak, that the presidency is dealing lightly with bandits in the country? Yeah. Um is it, is uh, actually good that the president is put on a, a spotlight as concerned um, uh, because he's from the north. The issue is that uh, you know this uh, the administration that came on the mandate that they want to bring to an end the issue of insurgency in the country, and uh, we have seen over time for almost uh, how many years now that um, that has not been the case. Short the situation has become worse. And um, and we 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 can agree with me that um, the issue of banditry moved to the next level during his administration. So is he not actually indictment on his government? Is it not actually an an, an, an indication that um, that something is wrong? If you came to power on the on the promise that you want to put an end to insurgents going on, especially in the, on, on the on the northeast. And I would think your tenor over the, the thing moved and escalated to the, another wide level on the side of Northwest, where you are from. How, how do you justify that? So the, the, those that are coming out with the rumor that uh, the president is having this question with the people cannot be far from the truth. Mm -hmm. This is a military um, um, security brought up by uh, the president. But do you and think... That uh, we, with his background, he can match action to the situation. But so, Barry Sachirike, do you think the president? So there is a failure on his part in, in, in this situation. There is indictment on his part. Okay. Those that are saying that rumor, I cannot be found for the truth. So, Vice Secretary, do you think the president's statements now that he's going to, you know, tackle this head on would put, you know, all this, these reports to rest and say? Irrespective of where you're from in Nigeria, if you're a criminal, the president is coming after you. Yeah, the, it, 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 it's good that um, you know uh, it has to be a present for all. And um, is um, is for me this talking talk and uh, trekking the hands part is of almost late. Uh, when did this um, banditry move to this level? When they started manifesting uh, as a little level. That is the time we should have crushed them. It's not the time we should have used the power as the, of the president to, to subdue them. Now he has said, uh, uh, you know, somehow the large party with the, the security ships that uh, by the grace of God, the people, public outcry, push him to remove them. And even after removing them, he has even rewarded them with ambassadorial the appointment. So, to be frank with you, uh, it is too late to, for me, this audience self work is too late. These right. guys have taken, have, as, as my brother have said, these, have, these guys have taken over the over the, the northern side. They have occupied uh, communities and they have expanded. And the, uh, if the care is not taken, the Boko Haram and uh, other Ashwap, other um, terrorist organizations will, will become their, their, their partner. And the situation would, would come worse. All right. What yeah, I'm Daniels. saying is this. The president, whatever he's doing now, is a little bit late. I, 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 I'm just hoping for a miracle. I'm just hoping that something miraculous will, will happen. So stem the tide. Because obviously, this thing has come to the level that government has to take a very strong stance. And I, I don't know how we're going to do that. All right. It let, has let, let's go back to a, Yemi a, Daniel. A and God is will help us to see what we can do. Let's go back to Yemi Daniel. Um, Barry Sachirike says, uh, says a little too late. Well, um, hopefully, you know, better late than never. Um, the president has said that, of course, uh, there would be new strategies along with the new service chiefs to en ensure that you know, we tackle the insurgents, tackle banditry, and tackle criminality in the country. Uh, do you, as a, um, a Nigerian, have faith in statements like that? Do you have faith in the new service chiefs and the idea of new strategies 
that could help um, um, solve this problem we currently are dealing with? Uh, yeah, I, to be honest with you, like Barista did say, it's a bit late in the day. And let me say this very quickly, as I've always said, uh, we have a difficult situation because the security architecture does not, uh, was never prepared for terrorism. And even up till now, I do not think that we're ready for that. I was asked, I've always asked the question that we need to redesign the security system such that intelligence will become the first line of defense. Do you understand? As it stands today, our first line of defense is actually police law enforcement. We need to change it. The intelligence gathering should be our first port of call in countering terrorism. We need to understand this thing that terrorism is a 21st century phenomenon that will not go away so fast. Now, in stepping up the intelligence gathering and capacity in the intelligence community, we would have, to a very large extent, uh, uh, we will be collaborating with a wide network of other organizations, other countries in the world who are trying to counter this issue. I tell you, with the present architecture, all of those things might just be rhetorics. I tell you the truth. They might just be statements. We've heard these things over and over and over again. And instead of getting things, instead of things getting better, they've consistently become worse. And, and we're talking about lives of human beings here. Some all of right. them that did not die may, 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 may be traumatized all their lives but by virtue of the experiences they've had in the den of these criminals. So okay. having said that, I think the necessary thing at this point in time, essentially, is to get the intelligence network a lot more involved in this process in such a way that even those ungoverned areas, the ungoverned areas, we need to recruit people from those systems. I tell you, All right, we Daniel. need to recruit people from those systems. And in the short term, trust me, in the short term, I'll suggest that we recruit machineries too. In the short term, you right. understand? Yeah, me, Daniel, Let's thank you very much. In the short term, get machineries into the fray so okay. that, that, that that's a, we can stand, so that we can increase our offensive against them. That, that's a that's a totally you know new conversation because I, I I remember we've talked about this in the past about hiring mercenaries you know to help us but you know let's also hope that the new strategies and the new ideas that the president has mentioned with the new service chiefs includes better investments in um, intelligence gathering um, and of course the, the little you know bits of infrastructural deficit in our security uh, that is uh, needed at a time like this. Thank you very much, Yemi Daniel, for Thank speaking you. with us. And um, Barisa Okereke Chiwike um, from uh, Afri Law. Thank you also for joining us and for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Right. Bye -bye. We'll, Thank we'll go on a short break. When we come back, still talking security, we're looking for, at it from a different angle. The meeting with the Northern Governors, traditional rulers and heads of our security agencies, which is taking place in Kaduna State for the next two days. Uh, we're talking about that next, what role uh, these governors and these you know, persons uh, have to play and how effective will their discussions be in ending the current crisis we're dealing with with regards insecurity in Nigeria. It comes up right after the short break here on The Breakfast. <laughs> 